Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at how you can approach broken chords for both the hands. The, uh, we look at right hand broken chord patterns as well as left hand broken chord patterns. And what this means is if you're playing broken chords in the right hand, it'll be great for accompaniment for any speeds and genres. And if you're doing this in the left hand, it'll be great if you want to support a right hand melody. So whether you're doing accompaniment or solo piano playing, these broken chord techniques should help you. And broken chords should not be confused with fully broken chords, which we all popularly call as arpeggios. So that would be things like this pattern you know or now I've done a ton of arpeggio videos in fact we have a playlist on arpeggios so if you want to learn fully broken chords you can always refer to our arpeggio playlist now this tutorial will not only cover two broken chord patterns for each hand we'll also be doing this at various time fields like straight and swing and maybe even triplets we'll also be doing it at very uh, a variety of speeds and also we are going to have a very good rock solid chord workout by doing this over three chord progressions one will be a very pop progression the other will be a rock progression and the other one will be a very flamenco or what we call as the andalusian cadence again of which i've done a playlist on that you should check out the andalusian cadence series as well okay so we are going to get started with the dorian rock progression first and we'll have to pick a key otherwise this lesson can go on for a very long time so we'll pick the key Key of G okay now G will keep it in the more minor domain so if you take G natural minor it has two flats right B flat as well as E flat so okay so B flat major becomes its cousin scale or its relative major scale. And similarly, B flat major's relative minor would be G minor. They would have the same notes, but different roots and, di and a different intervallic relationship between all of the same seven notes which you would have in both scales, B flat major as well as G minor. So we'll take the key of G, but remember we can borrow chords from time to time from the B flat domain. So the first order of business is for me to tell you these three chord progressions form them with also the correct inversions you can refer to my handwritten notes where all this is laid out and also what we've laid out for you is we'll have a chart for two other scales as well so in total we are going to study three scales and three chord progressions so that's a lot of work and on top of that we are going to the the entire goal of the lesson is to practice broken chord piano playing in both hands so before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider heading over to our patreon page for a five dollar subscription you'll get the notes for this entire lesson and everything else which has been done in the past and it'll be nice if you can also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell for regular notifications let's get cracking so we are on the key of G. Let's first look at the Dorian rock progression. I'll play you the chords and then break it down. So that's G minor, B flat major, F major, C major. You'll find this in a lot of the rock songs. For example, na 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 with a lot of the rock songs which are out there okay so the progression will be g minor b flat major f major and c major now this hails from the g dorian scale a dorian scale would be and we'll write this down in my notes a dorian would have a flat three and with respect to the natural minor you'll have a raised six you'll have a flat three flat seven and a raise six raise six meaning it gets sharpened or raised it goes up a step up a chromatic step with respect to the the uh, minor sixth which the g minor had g minor had the e flat and g dorian will have the e so raised six 
so from here it would be the one the three flat major we prefer to call it three flat major because b flat is the flat 3 with respect to g most of the roman numeral and the roman numeral naming conventions happen based on the major scale so because the b would be a major third the b flat would be a minor third and minor is flattening or lowering the major interval by one step so that would be b flat and it forms a b flat major chord so you would be doing three flat major three flat major and that's a capital roman so you might want to brush up on your roman numeral chord naming conventions also known as the nashville uh, chord naming system you can find another video we we'll leave you that in the description there are a lot of videos on the channel so head over to the home page and you can find a good summary of them listed in neat playlists you can also access nathanielschool.com in our free tutorial section where all of the videos are very easy to find with keywords and so on as we've done well i, I guess over a thousand videos so let's now break the progression down in terms of the degrees 1 minor g minor 3 flat major b flat major 7 flat major f major 7 flat in the sense normal 7 would have been f sharp we flatten that to form this more minor kind of scale dorian in th in this case f and then you're doing c major which is the four major very important property of the dorian is to go from your one minor to your four major so na 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 but in between that i am playing two other major chords which b flat a and let's work out our inversions which is the closest path between the chords g minor b flat major f major c major g minor b flat f c major if you start here second inversion start okay so that's your first chord progression what we are calling dorian rock and you can practice it with the root note in the left hand so to and change maybe every two beats or every four beats in a 4 by 4 context so 1 2 3 4 change 2 3 4 change 2 don't delay when you change 1 2 and then if we do the quicker change 1 2 3 4 1 2 change 4 there we go 2 get your inversions going and first off we are starting by playing in this block chord style we are going to slowly move on to broken uh, let me quickly teach you the remaining chord progressions because i wanted to sneak in three rather than one so dorian rock is done the next one is what we call as the andalusian cadence which will take the one minor g minor then it's again very minor esque so it will come down to the seven flat major which is f major come down even more down to the 6 flat major which is e flat major and then end on the 5 major now you may be thinking in the minor context the 5 is usually minor so the andalusian cadence is a very good hybrid minor chord progression in the sense it 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 starts with minor so you know it's kind of minor and then 7 flat major gives you a lot of hope but that 7 flat major is still part of the minor scale 6 flat major still part of it and then ends with the harmonic minor's fifth major which would be a d major okay and the second chord is the natural minor's major so in the g natural minor the f for the 7 flat would form a major chord and in the g harmonic minor the d will not form a d minor it will form a d major so the progression would be 
F E flat D G F if you like you can play it in this left right marching style like also what i call is the hit the road jack style hit dum don't you come back no more yeah but boom 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 hit the road jack left right left right g minor f major e flat major d major and back this is the andalusian cadence i've taught it a lot on the channel in fact we have a playlist on just this progression so check it out and last but not least let's look at a chord progression used to play almost every other pop song in the last decade or so what we call is the 6415 so i am forming 6415 with respect to the relative major i think it would be helpful there to now we are in the key of g minor so think g minor's relative major is b flat major correct so in the b flat major scale g minor would be your 6 e flat would be your 4 then you come to your tonic major b flat and then you do the 5 so g minor e flat major b flat major f major very pop like That's your G minor, mm, E flat, B flat, and just to walk you through the inversions, I forgot to tell you inversions for Andalusian because you don't need inversions there because you're dropping down each time. G minor, F major, E flat, D, or if you start that off with the first inversion, you'll do a first inversion of all the four chords, or second inversion. but for this modern pop or the pop, the pop progression which i gave you now you can do inversions for sure so if i start with root position just move the d to e flat and you get yourself the e flat major chord b flat major right here just just drop those two down by a step each so na 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 come down to f major which is your 5 now you could also visualize this or reimagine this theoretically as the 1 minor going to the 6 flat major going to the 3 flat major going to the 7 flat major but it just feels like b flat is the root when you do the pop progression the b flat seems to stick with the entirety of the progression while the g doesn't kind of work it doesn't work so well there so b flat seems to be the root for the pop stuff okay so three chord progressions the dorian rock andalusian and the modern pop So keeping these three progressions in mind we are going to take up the entire study for both right hand and left hand broken chord patterns. So now it's just going to be about broken chords and I'll just move in and out of these three chord progressions which we which we've just learned. And again a reminder you can find my notes for all of this I've even mapped out the inversions and we'll also transpose this for you on three keys for you to practice. So first off let's look at right hand broken chords and I'm just going to take G minor as a de good demonstration chord so we'll take G B flat D in root position and the two broken chord patterns for you in the right hand would be first off the top two and the bottom one so top two bottom upper two bottom 
So off the top, don't play this in the speed of the pulse. That would be on crotchets or quarter notes. It's, it, it's, it's not going to be a good pattern. It's going to expose these two notes a lot, you know. So at the bare minimum, you want to play these as eighth notes, which divide the beat by two. So one and two and three and four. Okay. And three and four. Okay. A good way to actually start just to float around without those other chords which I told you would be just to look at your thumb in your right hand and just see if you can move chromatically down. already a lot of mo movement there and keep the upper two notes consistent another thing you can do is now if you're getting bored with the upper two you can move them around as long as they are in third so So that's G, B flat, D, G, C, E flat, G, B flat, D, G, A, C. So. Just maintaining a root in the left hand for the most part. So that will be pattern one, the upper two notes and the bottom one. And then pattern number two would be outside and inside so you take the outside two notes G and D in this case and then bring in the middle note so with this outside inside technique I'd recommend that you play it with 16th notes instead of 8th notes so you get a it, it sounds more authentic you'll hear that more I guess so you go this is the pattern so you can do 16s like this and then 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 and if you feel it's too chaotic, you can knock off this extra outside inside and make it an arpeggio. Just start with, with the out and in note together, but then continue on with an arpeggio if you're playing it fast. If you're doing it swing though, it sounds very good just as it is. So I would encourage you to practice this in 16th note outside inside out in out in out okay another nice thing to do with outside inside is to change the inversions on the fly if you can so that's your root position first inversion root position first that's your outside inside and both of these patterns can also be done in the left hand so let me just walk you through the uh, right hand patterns for all the three chord progressions. We'll start with Dorian Rock. So I'm doing upper two, the top two and the bottom one. So top bottom, you can call it that. suspend that last chord since it's the 5 that's an F sus 4 and then resolving if you can so and then 
in the out in technique perhaps little faster perhaps or even the eighth note system for the out in sounds good out in in the sense outside two notes and inside one note these are the two broken chord techniques for the right hand and as you are observing this can happen for any form of accompaniment you choose to do and accompaniment basically means you could be singing you could be performing or you could be supporting another vocalist or you could be working with a choir or a rock band or maybe even doing this in a recording studio as a as a music arranger or a producer at the end of the day you play chords a lot more than you think on an a polyphonic instrument like a piano because other monophonic instruments like the flute the saxophone don't play chords they just play single notes right so now let's journey forward to developing broken style of broken chord patterns for the left hand and that will allow us to play the melody line in the right hand so the left hand you can do the same two patterns but if you take g minor for some reason if you start with the upper two and then bring back the root and try to carbon copy the right hand the left hand doesn't give you good results i like to start with the reverse so you start with the root generally at the down beat you'll have your roots so root upper there we go root upper two and in the left hand what's nice is you explore the durations of your notes you know that's very important because if you do it very long it can be very muddy and the sound will be very cluttered as you can hear so maybe long g and short with the other two this can also move you forward to a lot of other left hand patterns like moving just the root to the fifth we call this umpa um still a broken chord pattern so this is what i am trying to do now low and the upper two choppy okay the other pattern which we did in the right outside inside i think works very well just as it is in the left and it sounds a lot better here i think especially when you swing it has a very rock sound i think to it because of that pumping pulse with the root here so let's explore this with the chord progressions we have um this is your pop one Andalusian Dorian I'm choosing the yeah uh, outside inside technique and you can use the pedal for added effect but don't play if you play the pedal when your left hand is too low i don't think it will work even if you lift it in time it just sounds too cluttered so if you're using the pedal play in and around middle c there we go
right, guys. So we've looked at the broken pattern in the right hand. That's broken pattern one. Inside out, outside, inside rather. Broken pattern number two. Then the left hand, as I told you, you invert it. Do low, high, and then uh, uh, the other one, the outside, inside stays the same. Okay, and this can also propel you to, in the future, do a lot more broken chord-based variations. Like, just off the top, if you want to make this triplets. Now, all of this was eighth notes or with swing. So, if you go eighth notes and two, if, what, what happens if you want to do one and a two and a three and a four? Just, I want to add that extra note. So, how do I do it? One, two, three, one, two. You're just kind of coming back to that original uh, dyad, basically. So, the triple it. Even the outside, inside, in triplets. You can also do pop patterns like the tresio, also known as a soca clave, where you go ta, 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 ta. So, if you do. There we go. Yeah, you can also consider starting from the low and then going to the top for different results, right? So, there are a lot of variations. Do let me know in the comments if you want me to do a part two on broken chords. I love playing them. Part two, I could probably bring out a lot of genres and a lot more patterns if, if you're interested. So, I uh, hope you found the lesson useful. Do leave us your thoughts in the comments and uh, it'll be nice if you can also consider giving the video a like and a share. And uh, if you haven't already, it'll be nice if you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. And my handwritten notes are waiting for you on our Patreon page. Do consider giving it a check. Right, guys, thanks a ton for watching the video. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.